All right, I'm just here catching up with some email. Uh, happy Saturday night. Um, I have to talk about testosterone levels a little bit as far as uh, what you're looking for in testing. And I know a lot of people think that this is BS, that we don't go by that and we just take what we want to take and all that. And many people do. But the reason that you really need to do it the correct way and follow through, especially as you're getting older and get tested, you're, and the problem, the whole problem you're going to have is finding somebody that truly understands what they're doing, that truly, you know, gives a rat's ass about uh, the science, uh, the, the medical science of it, and what we know, and can interpret um, the results from a blood test, because there are many different versions of testosterone uh, that's circulating in your body. You know, um, yeah, they, they could give you a number that's considered free testosterone. They can give you a number that's considered bioavailable testosterone, they can give you a number that's considered total testosterone, they can give you a number that's considered, um, there's, 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 testosterone can be bound by two different ways, and it's just on and on and on, it's a lot for you to soak up, and it's a lot for me to recite, you know, verbatim by memory and, and accurately, but uh, suffice it to say that most numbers, when you look for what's considered normal, which is going down all the time, they lower it all the time, what they consider normal, just normalizing our own um, decrease, you know, seen you know, throughout the, the, over the entire scope of men from age whatever to age 90, uh, broadband wide across, you know, the entire country, and that includes men that are in poor health and every other thing. So if they take, like, the median number out of all those guys, right, you know, most Americans are not in the greatest of health. Most Americans are older as opposed to being younger, you know. So if you're going by those numbers, you're comparing yourself. You're, you're, if you come up average, you're, you're considering the average of every man in the United States. You know, the, even um, sick people, elderly people, and every other thing. So when they come up with a number like that, and yet still they got to continue to lower the numbers and change the standard like they just did. LabCorp just... I told you about this already, released a statement back in July that they were lowering the ranges for what's considered normal, lowering them down. Again, so uh, it's a mess. Anyway, um, if you go and get tested, uh, they give you a, the, the, the generic kind of view is they're going to give you a total testosterone number. All right, here's a problem with that. Um, then they're going to prescribe X amount of tests. Now, a really good, responsible medical professional is going to continue to monitor you and do blood work thereafter and they're going to start you out at whatever and they're going to prescribe that and then they're going to look and see what that does to you and where that brings your levels so it's a it's a long duration thing until they figure out and tweak it and get exactly where they need to be to try to get you to a particular number here's a problem problem comes in with all the variances and the uh the, the differences from one man to the next man especially as we age um, two men could be you know, at the same number as far as total testosterone. You know, we could both be eight or 900, which I think is probably in most people a good healthy number to be at. And you think that sounds really high, right? Think that's really high. Well, most average doctors would think that was too high. They would think it was too high because you're way over, you know, just the average norm. You know, you're at the high end. It's still not abnormal, but you, they, they're just gonna, if they can get you to probably 400, they're gonna think that's good. And it's not good because if your if your total testosterone level is even like 800, you know what that equates to for your, your free level on the average, by the same average, that would equate to your free level being like uh, bioavailable. That's what you really want to know about your bioavailable, not free. Sorry, free is not the only uh, bioavailable. Is uh, uh, what's it bound to? Lact lactam. Um, uh, Christ, I should have done more homework here so I could tell you exactly what we're talking about. Uh, yeah, let's just do this. Uh, most circulating testosterone is bound to sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG, which is also called testosterone binding globulin. Lesser fraction is albumin bound and a small proportion exists as free hormone. Okay, so now when they're considering bioavailable, they're not only considering uh, what they consider to be free hormone, they're also considering um, albumin bound because albumin is like a really fragile bind and that testosterone is actually going to be bioavailable. So you're still going to be able to make use of that.
So they, they consider bioavailable as uh, the totality of everything that they think is going to be okay in your body. Uh, they would consider it to be, uh, yeah, bioavailable uh, is going to be like total and bioavailable serum or free. Uh, should be used as supplemental tests to total testosterone in the above situations. Correlation coefficient between bioavailable and free testosterone by equilibrium Dialysis is 0 0.9606. However, bioavailable testosterone is usually the preferred test as it more closely reflects total bioactive testosterone, particularly in older men. Older men not only have elevated SHBG levels, but albumin levels also may vary due to coexisting illnesses. So the whole point is, uh, like I was saying before, if they only get you to say like, Let's, let's pretend that, that your doctor's going to get you to 500. So a guy with 500 total testosterone is going to be, let's see, well, we really are going to get, uh, let's say, between 17 and 18 years old, um, normal range is considered total testosterone, 300 to 1,200 NGs per DL. So now let's, let's go down here and see what, how much of that is free usually. Well, from 20 to 25 years, free testosterone is only 5.25 to 20.7 NG per DL. So you see there's a huge difference there. And then by the time we add in the albumin-bound testosterone, which is considered bioavailable, um, your dad, you're looking at, that's going to put you at, um, the bioavailable total is going to be for like 20, 20 to 29-year-old male between 83 and 257 NGs per DL. Okay, so if they're gonna get you to uh, say 400 or 500 total, the bioavailable out of that, you're only gonna probably be able to make use of 83 to 257 NGs per DL. So the whole point is you really want somebody that knows what they're doing because they wanna look at what they've prescribed you to, you know, how much they've prescribed you, and then they wanna see what's become of that in your body and where um, the, the coefficient, what the coefficient is between the different, uh, between basically bound, uh, other than the album and bound, because that's still bioavailable, and uh, free um, versus total. Because uh, one guy, he may, have, he may have to have a really high total level and then find out something's going on that uh, bioavailable is still low, like low below the average. So it's more, it's more than just you know, taking X, X amount of milligrams a week or every uh, 10 days or two weeks and ending up at, you know, uh, X number of free testosterone because the free test, I mean, uh, total testosterone, because total testosterone is not going to tell you the whole story. You know, one man may be, um, you know, he may have 800 NGs per DL total testosterone and the guy, and, and he be, may bioavailability wise, he may be able to make, a, make use of enough of that testosterone that he's still you know, feeling really great and he's doing good, mission accomplished. And the guy next to him, he may be, he may also be, um, you know, at the same level of total testosterone. He may still be up there just as high, but bioavailability wise, he may be down so low that he really doesn't feel much relief from that testosterone uh, replacement. So then you got to figure out why and what's going on. So that's what a really good, a really good endocrinologist does. And they are out there, I know that, I've worked with them. A really good endocrinologist, he's going to take into consideration, he wants to give you the lowest, uh, he wants that total, wants to give you the lowest dose to be able to get the total testosterone uh, at a point where you're most efficiently able to absorb enough of that to satisfy your, your uh, deficiency, your natural deficiency and your lowered production. You understand where I'm going with this, or I'm just not getting it across because I'm not explaining it very clearly. Anyway, that's that's why you know a lot of guys they ask me questions and they email me about TRT, which is awesome. I think uh, everybody, uh, everybody, as you begin to age and you start to exhibit the symptoms and all, you should be on TRT. It's just it doesn't make sense not to. You, it's an illness. Treat it. There's no embarrassment. There's no shame. There's no, you know, uh, it, 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 testosterone is not the devil incarnate. Um, nine times out of ten when they prescribe women hormone replacement therapy after menopause or after a hysterectomy or whatever have you to relieve them of a whole lot of, of nasty symptoms so they don't have to live with a diminished quality of life. Guess what they prescribe them? You think it's estrogen? No. It's testosterone because testosterone is a precursor to estrogen production in women. All right. So they need that too. Now they make very little 
you know, compared to ourselves, but that's still the preferred replacement now today, knowing what we know in females. So, you know, what's good for the, uh, the goose is good for the gander, I guess. Um, so you just want, that's why it's very important, very important to be successful is not just to throw some tests in your body and wonder what's going on. And this is actually why, you know, uh, part of why, you know, one person can take a, a, a seemingly very low amount of test and the guy next to him has to take a hell of a lot more test, you know, to, to even get anywhere near the same result. That's, that's a huge part of it. It's not always more gear, more gear, more test. It's not what it's about. It's about the, the, the lowest amount of the medication that you actually have to, uh, to input into the body to be able to achieve um, the bioavailable number that you're looking for. And there are other things that they can do to free up bound testosterone. You know, so a really good endo, he understands the interplay between the hormones, and they can work with that. They'll see that and be able to say, hey, this differential is too great, or this coefficient's wrong. We need to uh, work with this and figure this out, and they will do that. And um, I've seen it happen. I, I, I've, I have seen guys go to an endo that I know, and the guy's like, Jesus, this is, he's got so much testosterone in him, it's ridiculous. And the reason he keeps turning it up and... He doesn't feel like it's doing, you know, what he, what he wants it to do is the bioavailability-wise, he's really, really low. And after working with him for a while, he ends up taking, like, you know, less than half of what he was taking, and he has better results from it. This is not unusual to happen. So that's the value in actually going to somebody that's medically trained professional, that this is what they do, but they really understand it. And by the same token, you can get a guy, you can be a medical doctor with a license to practice, because they're still practicing, and... Uh, he may not have enough experience, he may not have enough education in that field that uh, he may be a newbie relatively toward it, um, and he may not really know how to, to properly prescribe it. But um, they're out there, it, you know, eventually I guess insurance one day should cover it. It's just like anything else, it's just like any other illness or sickness you could have your prescribed medicine for. You want to live with it. You want you know, your quality of life to be diminished as you age, or do you want to go ahead and get the most out of life that you can get until they put you in the ground? That's what it really comes down to. That's what it's about. Um, so that's it. That's why it's, it is really, it truly is. It's not BS when I tell you it's important that um, you do your very level best to get with a really good medical professional that this is something that they're trained in. They've specialized in this area on hormones and things, and they understand this interplay and they know how to do these things because there's more to it than just putting a bunch of tests in your body. There's a lot more to it. So that's it. Just, uh, just a little piece of advice for what it's worth or whatever. Take it as ever you want. But that's what I got.